Well, good morning, YouTube. I've had this North Star PTO generator for about three years now, and I thought it's time for an update. Now, this guy puts out 7,200 watts continuously and 7,800 watts peak. You need 14 horsepower at the PTO to get that full amount of power out of it. Now, you can figure roughly two horsepower for every 1,000 watts. Okay, back here we've got a 30 amp output, 120, 240 volts, that's really nice. And you got the 120, 20 amp output and a breaker. It's got a really nice alternator on it, less than 6% total harmonic distortion, nice clean power. All right, so today I'm gonna exercise this guy. I, I like to run it about every three or four months. I think the windings can collect water if you let it sit too long. And so I like to burn that out of there, keep it in good shape. Otherwise, you'd probably lose the amount of power that it'll output over time. I got it connected to my old B7100 Kubota. I've had this tractor for 25 years. It's got over 5,000 hours on it. It's a little worn out, but the engine is still really strong. Probably get another 5,000 hours out of it. Who knows? Anyway, let's get this thing hooked up, and I'll show you how I'm going to use it today. All right, let's take a quick look at my setup here. I got the diesel B7100 Kubota tractor. This thing probably had 19 horsepower or so when it was new. Uh, it's probably less than that now. I've got the bucket down, holding it in place, nice and steady. Got the generator up under the uh, crosswalk here. Good location because you want it out of the weather, but you also want it to breathe. You gotta have a breeze. You don't want any of your diesel fumes getting into your house, your garage. You know, have it out in a safe place. I've got it connected on the 30 amp with my cord here going to my transfer switch. I'll say a quick word about grounding, and this is not advice because all situations are different, right? But in general, if you're out in the field, maybe you're using this to pump water, irrigation or something, and it's standalone, uh, then I would probably bond it and maybe ground it at that location. But if you're connecting it to a transfer switch like I am here, then you would unbond it and not ground it. And that's because the common and the ground are going to pass through the transfer switch, go back to your main panel, and be bonded and grounded there. But again, you got to, you know, do your own research. Okay, so we could go ahead and power the house directly off this generator. It's got nice clean power, and we could do that, but there are two problems. One is you'd have to run it 24-7 at a high RPM. It's kind of hard wear and tear on my tractor, and it's going to use a lot of diesel. And the second problem is when you drop like the uh, water heater on here, 4,000 watts on and off, it's going to affect the throttle setting and the RPM, so you'd have to kind of stay on top of it and that's too much of a pain in the neck so what we're going to do is we're going to take all that power in through a transfer switch this guy right here that runs it into my solar power i have a couple of 60 amp chargers and we're going to run that tractor at full power for about two hours and charge this 60 amp battery bank all right so each one of these is rack mounted five kilowatt hours uh, lithium iron phosphate Got six of them, so that's 30 kilowatt hours. And right now, we are state of charge 12%. That's pretty low. So the next thing I do is I switch everything in the house over to the utility. Now I could keep it on the PTO generator, but while I'm charging the batteries, I don't want to be power and stuff in the house. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch everything to the utility. There we go. And I'm switching everything out here to the utility. Okay, so right. now you can see that there's no power going into the house. Now the system is pretty much shut down. We'll go ahead and just turn off all the output. And then this thing will go to sleep. You hear that? Okay, so next I'm just gonna fire up my tractor and I'm gonna go ahead and engage the PTO and just let this thing idle a little bit, get warmed up before I put it under any loads. Okay, there we go. Okay, so you can 
can see now there's no power going into the house from the solar. I am pulling in 17 amps off of the um, panels right now and it's going to make it hard to see how much power is coming off the generator. So I think I will go ahead and cut those off. All right, so now we got zero coming in. I hate to throw away solar power, but now we can see exactly what we're getting. All right, I'm gonna cut the power there, and let's go ahead and get the power coming from the generator. All right, so under my charger setup, I'm gonna drop this down to 20%. So we're only gonna pull in 20% of that 30 amp circuit for starters. We don't wanna drop it right onto all the load. go ahead and bring it in to the transfer switch and we got power going to our two charge controllers or our chargers I should say it's going to check the power qualify it there it goes now it's on it's going to start pulling some amps so let's be ready to adjust our throttle RPMs dropped when it started pulling these 23 amps. All right? Let's let it run here for just a minute at this load and then we'll increase it. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and up this to 40%. And we'll see the amps will crank up. Now that's relative to 50 volts, not 240. Alright, so let's go out here and get ready to adjust our throttle. fine at 40 percent but let's go ahead and up it to 50 this is where I normally run it it's pretty happy at 50 it's got 29 amps 30 amps going up you can hear the rpm dropping already okay so you feel a little bit of struggle on the motor there but it's handling it we're at 50 percent so figure half of 7200 watts for the smoke okay so you can see our battery is charging we're up to 13 percent We've got 68 amps coming in, and that's at the 52 volts of the battery bank. So that's roughly half of our 7,200 watts, right? Because 68 times 52 is roughly 3,400 watts-ish. Something like that, right? Now this is where I would normally run it, but just for you guys, let's go up and see what happens to our little tractor when we try and push it harder. There's 60. Hear that, hear that throttles dropping?
pretty much measure the actual max horsepower of the tractor if I keep taking this up to where it fails. But I don't think we're going to do that. You can get an idea, we're getting close. Right, so what do we got? What's 80 times 50? That's about 4,000 watts. So that's, that's only uh, eight horsepower. Wow. Huh. So that's roughly 4,000 watts, but not about eight horsepower. I think it'll go a little more, but probably not a lot more. I don't know. Get the exhaust coming out of that. We'll see how that changes after an hour. Good. Struggling, but steady. It is hot up. I feel a lot of heat coming off. All right, guys. So I think I'm going to go ahead and cut this a little short, uh, mainly because I got a lot of solar power coming in, and I don't want to waste it. Now I could, I could turn the solar on and run. I can charge off the solar and the generator at the same time. We can bring all that power in. Uh, I just didn't do that because then you wouldn't be able to see exactly how much the generator was contributing. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down early and I'll probably run it again tonight after the sun goes down. But that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Just a note, I switched the solar back on. Let's see what's coming in. About 3,000 watts. Just look at that, guys. 58 amps off the solar panel. And they're not even fully in the sun. That'll go to like 170 amps. All day long off those solar panels. Every day. That's a lot of power, huh? Kind of interesting to put it next to a generator and see what you're getting. cool down here. That's not even in the sun. This one is. What is it like? 10 o'clock maybe? It's not even fully in the sun.